Hello, I'm Rob Hirschfeld, CEO and co-founder of RackN. Today we're going to talk about how RackN is helping customers with self-managed infrastructure by connecting IT silos. Fundamentally, RackN is about giving customers control of their infrastructure, of, of how they actually perform their operations using our product, Digital Rebar. And so what we've really seen is that infrastructure alone is useless that our customers are challenged because of all of the silos that they've been building over time in their infrastructure. And that can both be in cloud and on premises. And by defeating these infrastructure silos with automation chaining, we really create a whole new way of thinking about infrastructure and data center operations. We're really powering infrastructure in motion and making it possible to think about infrastructure in a cloud-like way. And this is important because our customers really need to be able to take control of their infrastructure destiny, right? They need to be able to scale out and, and move faster. And that means eliminating manual pieces, but it also means connecting the dots together of things that they've already automated or tools that they have that work well, but don't integrate well. And that enables them to meet compliance requirements and make sure things are patched and updated, that they can create accurate reports that cover all of their infrastructure. And they can do that without being locked into a single vendor, because it's not possible to just solve this by buying all of your components from one vendor. That really is an anti-pattern. As a matter of fact, our customers insist on being multi-vendor in, in many places where they can have multiple supply chains for hardware, or computers, or switches, or storage devices. Um, and even if they were single vendor, Vendors coming in with new versions can also create as much of a disruption. And the bottom line here is that the cost to change is very high. And that means the cost to innovate is very high. And that's what RackN is trying to help customers with. We want to make it possible to look at your data center as a rapidly evolving, responding to change and innovation, where we can embrace what you have and not be worried about what's going to come down the pipe. Part of understanding how, to, how this works and the challenges that we've created as an industry is that we've created a very distinct separation between infrastructure as code and things that consume APIs and infrastructure as a service that provide APIs. So this is the cloud model where everything that happens below the line is cloud and everything above is a client or a tool or a platform or an automation suite. And traditionally it looks like this. You might have a tool like Terraform at the top layer or a multi-cloud automation tool uh, that then links all your tools. Ideally, private cloud just plugs right in and everybody's happy. But what we've learned with Digital Rebar and RackN is that private cloud is not the same as self-managed infrastructure. And this is a really significant thing to understand, that we can't just virtualize our way into solving this problem. When we're self-managing infrastructure, we have to think about a much bigger picture. So it's not just having a software-defined storage compute networking manager it, that manages VMs or containers or, or what have you. We actually have to put that in perspective because any one of those SDXM uh, platforms is actually part of a much bigger infrastructure, one that includes all different hardware types and storage types and networking types, but not just those, not just the physical hardware, but how you allocate IP addresses and names, how do you uh, insert your security and track information and credential people. All of those components have to be managed as part of your infrastructure in order to manage a self-managed infrastructure as a service, not just the virtualization layers. And the challenge that customers have with this is that they're actually highly siloed environments. They they pick the best of breed or they have legacy infrastructure where those tools are done by different providers. Of course, all this is hidden from you if you're using a, uh, one of the major cloud providers, but if you're self-managing gear or if you're trying to be multi-cloud, you actually have to think about how all these systems are fit together and you will pick one and then need to apply it into these other places. And this is exactly where RackN enters the, the picture by building a physical layer up infrastructure as a service where we actually work with all of the infrastructure pieces that are in your infrastructure, not just the compute or storage or networking layers, but actually connecting all of the pieces together. Now that's a huge and daunting challenge 
happily, we don't have to do all of those things to be successful and make our customers successful. What we've done, and we add expand our catalog every day, but we cover the critical things, the dominant uh, players in the market. But even more importantly is that we've made it really easy to add new capabilities. In a lot of cases, our customers are able to integrate their existing infrastructure components and services and vendors by themselves. Or they work with us and we very quickly integrate it into a way that becomes sustainable in our catalog so that they don't have to maintain an integration to a common platform. That means that we have to leverage infrastructure's code incredibly deeply so that whatever we do becomes portable. And our customers can then use it site to site, customer to customer. So if one, if somebody buys a new type of server, all of the customers of RackN improve. And then critically, they need to be able to enable self-service. Because when you're talking about self-managed infrastructure, it has to be self-managed. You don't want RackN, our service, our capabilities, our limitations, limiting your ability to grow. And so part of what we've done is make it so that not only do we have this deep catalog, but the catalog is designed for people to implement the services themselves without RackN getting in the way. But one of the things that we've learned in all this is that the integrations are not enough. It's not good enough for us to build a whole bunch of API shims to different infrastructure components. We actually have to be able to coordinate between these operational silos. In order to do provisioning, operations, cloud deployments, all of these things, we actually have to talk to each service that's required in the correct sequence with the correct data via the correct API. And the sequence really, really matters. It's something that we've been calling automation chaining or service chaining. So from that perspective, we actually look at an end-to-end -end workflow of pulling all these pieces together. And sometimes we hear terms like orchestration and workflow and components like that. Internally, we use workflow. Um, the, the challenge is that a lot of these terms in, are very loaded in the market. And so when you're looking at what RackN has delivered with Digital Rebar, it really does feel like a service chaining capability where we're able to connect a whole bunch of pieces together. You make one API request, I need a system, and we do all the work behind the scenes to connect all the dots necessary to deliver that system. For some customers, that's very simple, one or two steps. For others, it can involve a very detailed chain of events in which uh, credentials are set, names are set, passwords are set, uh, registrations are done with external systems and, and the like, and, and that is normal operational practice. The nice thing here is that you can start with the simple and slowly bring in more and more components until the complete process is automated. You don't have to go from zero to 100 in the first pass. So let me explain this with a very concrete example, which is our VMware bootstrapping capabilities. Uh, this is something that we have live in production with, with many customers, something that uh, in this next release we are uh, formally including secure boot capabilities to allow the system to run in trusted platform modes. And it's pretty straightforward out of the box in this case. A machine comes in, it pixie boots, goes through our discovery process, installs our agent in the discovery. Uh, discovery isn't in memory, so it doesn't actually touch any of the disks. And then it starts doing operational process controls that improve uh, the system. Uh, in some cases, we don't change at all. We just do an inventory and verify the hardware controls. We can take data in advance of a shipping manifest and then verify that the actual systems match the manifests. Um, and then we can go in and start doing configurations, setting the RAID and BIOS and firmware pieces, doing the out-of-band management configurations uh, for a huge suite of vendors um, that actually go through and make sure they're set up correctly and have the right credentials and passwords and IP address ranges and uh, name registrations. So a lot of work that gets done in here to actually verify that the machine is not just correct in itself, but correctly connected to the environment around it. By doing that and making sure that works and stopping if it's not and raising flags and alarms, we actually save tremendous amounts of time because systems come in, they get configured quickly and accurately, and we move forward. Or you're given the exact information on how to correct and fix. From there, we can automatically move forward into the digital, into the VMware installation process. Uh, their NetBoot system is called Weasel. Uh, you might be familiar with Preseed or Kickstart, similar concepts. Um, but once that is, is running, it actually will install VM, VMware uh, v6 or v, version 6 or version 7. 
Um, and then we have a series of VIBs, which are basically packages for our agent that enable our the system to communicate back. So it opens firewall to back, talk back to digital rebar, installs our specialized VMware agent, and then it performs many tasks that are necessary to bring the basic VMware ESX install up to standard so that it can then be managed by vSphere, by VCF, by Cloud Builder. Um, all these steps are actually required bef in most customer accounts before downstream automation can take place. And that includes doing things like setting up the networking correctly, putting it on the correct VLAN. Uh, our customers run uh, VMware on a, a dedicated VLAN, not on the default VLANs, um, which is no VLAN. They, you have to set the password. Set, and some customers are actually resetting the password requirements to require harder passwords and come out of the box. Installing TLS certificates so when you talk to the APIs that are then exposed, they're actually done with correct TLS information uh, and done securely and not violating uh, conformance and compliance security requirements, right? Patching ESXi itself to make sure that it's at the right, correct level and then doing a final verification step because when you run Cloud Builder, it's a one-way process. Anything that's out of place when you feed Cloud Builder is going to result in a complete failure of the, the cluster build. So we do as much as we can to make sure that that downstream handoff is 100% correct. And if it's not, we've made it so easy to reset the cluster that you can actually make some tweaks, reset the cluster, take a short coffee break, and come back to a fully functioning cluster. We're that fast in doing this process and doing these deployments in an automated way. And at that point, you can then leave the agents running and maintain control if you want uh, as a backup to be able to reset the systems, or you can delete them. Uh, we've never tried to stay involved in the machines. If customers don't want uh, the agent in place, you can simply reboot, and uh, Digital Rebar would regain control during a reboot cycle. So that's a lot of steps that have to all be put together to uh, bootstrap VMware. And that's typical of any data center implementation. I have similar graphs for installing Windows, which we do based on image deployments, uh, Linux, which we install many, many flavors of in many variations and, and capabilities. And so this type of automation chaining is at the heart of what we have to do to be successful running self-managed infrastructure. And that's what digital rebar is all about. And it's important to understand this isn't just about providing an infrastructure API. It's really about providing interconnections between all of these silos. The silos aren't bad or wrong. The complexity is actually a necessary thing. It just needs to be managed in a consistent, repeatable way that we can actually take and leverage across the industry. And this is why Digital Rebar is really a combination of infrastructure as a service and infrastructure as code. So let me drill into that idea a little bit more. And I'm just pulling a couple of uh, the, the services, the silos that you would think about um, in a normal deployment. Uh, typically, there's many more. But when we look at this, this needful complexity is actually an important part. We're not trying to tell people they're managing their data centers wrong. Everybody has things they want to improve, but you also have things that you need to keep. You have, you have things that, that are um, going to be legacy infrastructures, but they're not legacy infrastructures. They're operating infrastructures. And that's important to understand. That's complexity, but it's okay. We don't think that people should just flush all their servers because they brought in a new way to manage things. We actually want this to work within that. And that's core to how Digital Rebar was designed from an architectural starting point. When you think about it from that perspective, we end up looking at a system that looks very similar to hybrid cloud management. Every one of these different uh, silos is really a service. Those services end up having service interfaces. Um, and we can manage cloud and cloud infrastructure just as well as bare metal. Bare metal is a little bit trickier, and we, we do the hard lift first. Um, and then we can shim into a whole bunch of other things. Um, and the thing that makes this, us distinct in this case is because we started from self-managed data centers, we end up being uh, focused on self-managed services where we are not taking over control and management and hiding a whole bunch of the sausage making. We actually have to expose that. And from a self-managed perspective, transparency in operations is absolutely essential. And this is one of the things that is, is hard to uh, overstate for RackN. We think very carefully about how to make our operators independent and autonomous so that they can manage themselves, that they don't have to be calling RackN or asking for help or 
relying on us to run their infrastructure for them. Just the opposite. We work very, very hard to make sure that our operators are able to understand what's going on and extend the system themselves and troubleshoot and figure things out because that's what we're selling, autonomy. So what, the way that looks is that we take Digital Rebar's infrastructure as code and we build a catalog of components that attach to standard services. Those systems, the infrastructure code systems, have to be expressive, portable, and modular so that they're easy to understand what they're doing and able to work from one site to another site, even if the sites are very different. And then Digital Rebar, because of those expressive portable modular components, is able to chain them together in a consistent way. So there has to be state, there has to be understanding of workflow, there has to be understanding of sharing data, and then driving all those in a consistent way. And at this point, Digital Rebar has amazingly sophisticated controls baked into how things go. And at the same time, it's very simple to get started and learn and build a workable workflow that performs out of the box. Many times we've been able to take the complexity of building a really sophisticated infrastructure as code module and just bury that into the module using the tools that we've developed over years and not have to expose that into normal operations. What that ends up looking like is a lot of different APIs that are able to be uh, wrapped and managed by Digital Rebar. We can use Terraform and be consumed by Terraform. We can consume Ansible and be used by Ansible. We can drive the IPMI tool rather than having to recreate the wheel or Redfish or a vendor out of band management. If you have simple REST calls, we have wrappers for simple REST calls where you can just make those things work. Or if it's something that requires native integration like LDAP, uh, we can write those shims too. Digital Rebar is inherently multi-protocol. It has to be. You can't boot a server without touching at least five different protocols. And that means that Digital Rebar is inherently friendly to being able to bridge all these silos together in a coherent, understandable way. So I, I hope this has helped you, ex helped you understand just how deep and unique Digital Rebar is. Rackn has really had to build a platform to enable our customers to be autonomous and self-managed. It really means recreating things that hyperscalers hide behind their firewalls and tr consider trade secrets, but Rackn is built as a product. And that's a unique feature mix, right? It means that we have to have a self-managed infrastructure as a service API, and we've needed to be bare metal capable and start from the, that physical layer and build upwards but we also enable software-defined infrastructure tools, VMware and Kubernetes and capabilities like that. But then on top of that, we've had to build in this portable infrastructure as code system where you can see our catalog and expand it and, and put things together in ways so that if you have uh, the same type of servers as somebody else, that's good. You should get a benefit from us having uh, common tools and components across the industry. And that's a lot of what we've done. And then chained it together so that if you have one type of server, but a different type of automation that a different person has, you should be able to share those benefits. And that means that you're heterogeneous ready, that you don't have to say, oh, I can only use more of the Dell servers and I can't buy from HP anymore, or vice versa. Uh, we've been embracing heterogeneous infrastructure from day one, and we think that that's critical for data center infrastructure because fundamentally infrastructure in motion means that you have to work with the brownfields where you're already delivering value, where you have proven infrastructure, but it has to be able to adapt to change. You have to be able to bring in something new and reset a cluster from a virtualization platform to a container platform, be able to do that overnight or change out whole, whole sections of your infrastructure and be adaptable. And that means that you can always be innovating, that you don't look at your data center as a static resource where you bought this gear for this purpose and it will never be reprovisioned or reconfigured for anything else. We see data centers as highly dynamic environments and that's what we empower for our customers. We hope you'll check us out. It's very easy to try uh, Digital Rebar. Just visit rackn.com, try a self-trial. We won't even call you. You will get to prove that the software works by yourself because fundamentally that's what we're selling. Thank you.